welcome back to the Parlor Den. In this week's episode, we're going to do a painting tutorial of a building. So really this episode came about uh, from the community, you guys. Uh, mentioned that you'd want to see a more paint-centric or paint-focused video. Now I've done a lot of videos where, uh, you know, I kind of construct the whole thing and then I kind of add a little bit of the painting on the very end just to show you the different colors that I use to get, get the look I'm looking for. Um, and I have done some painting tutorials in the past where we, you know, the example would be the Tudor style or the stone bridge, uh, but I haven't really done one recently. And there's certainly some updates that I've done to my painting technique. I think I've taken it to the next level and I've, I've gotten better at it. So I wanted to do a more updated painting tutorial. So I kind of built this farmhouse and really we're not going to be talking about how I built that. That This is more of a painting tutorial, not a construction tutorial. So it's a pretty standard building. We'll take a look at this is the finished product here. And you can see it's a standard little farmhouse. Uh, it's similar to the Spanish Mission if you're looking for construction ideas of, you know, for example, over these doors with the hinges, the stonework, uh, the shingles. Uh, I've done it in other constructions and the dock accessories on that little, uh, you know, boathouse and stuff like that I've done. So I've done these uh, constructions in other videos and we're really not going to be focusing on that. So we're going to be dedicating this video to the painting of it. So kind of getting that real weathered, dingy look to it, the uh, the stonework, painting the doors and the shingles. And you can see that we've done a lot of weathering on the here, uh, on this. And I've done lots of different surfaces. So I wanted to have the wooden shingles on top. We have some stonework going on here. We got some kind of like a stucco wall. Uh, and then we got some woodwork on the inside. So we have a fully painted interior and then of course the walls. I'm gonna show you how to paint all that in this video. All right, but uh, before we get down to the table and start that tutorial, I really wanna just have a brief conversation about the global campaign. Uh, it's finished and uh, I'm happy to report the English faction won, we did it. We, we won the whole tournament. Uh, and it was, uh, it was you know a lot of hard work. A lot of games were put in. I uh, had some family members participate, maybe willing and unwilling, but uh, they actually helped uh, uh, the English faction win the entire thing. So I want to thank all those players that submitted for, for England. Uh, also, I want to thank all the organizers for sure for putting it all together. Um, and definitely uh, Joseph Forrester and the team at uh, Blood and Pigment and uh, the team at Tales of the Sales uh, for really, uh, you know, putting this uh, campaign together and really getting involved and helping uh, uh, make it a great success. And also, I want to thank uh, Mike Tunez and uh, the team at Firelock Games for also supporting this and giving prizes and really being a driving force. Uh, if you guys want to see the final results, if you guys have been following along, uh, you can check out on the Blood and Pigment page and the Firelock Games page. I'll put the link down below. And you can see uh, how everybody finished up, all the different countries, different factions, all the interesting stuff that happened. There's some really cool photos in there. Uh, you can really see how the whole campaign finished up. All right, so that aside, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you guys like what we're doing here in the Punter Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Punter Den and get first-hand information when I start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, let's get down to the table. Let's start painting. So I figured in uh, this one I would start off by showing you some of the tools that I'll be using to paint uh, this farmhouse. Uh, so these are the paintbrushes I like to use. So these are your standard ones you'd use on a like a, a canvas. Uh, and I got a little bit of a longer one. You've probably seen me uh, cover with a black coat. That's what I'm pointing at on, on there first. Uh, cover everything with the black paint uh, and then kind of move on to some of the other brushes. Uh, I'll use a couple of Army Painter dry brushes going on here. We got the medium size and small size. I like to use these two a lot. Uh, and then some finer brushes. That one is the square brush that I usually paint ships with and, and a really fine detail brush. So those are kind of the ones I've selected for this project. I ended up using one other brush and I'll explain to it later when we get to it. Uh, you can see uh, this is the farmhouse here. I got the door separated. I didn't glue that in yet because I wanted to paint it separately. Uh, and the roof, it's kind of like a little popsicle sticks or whatever. I just broken up. I kind of like the, the way that looks as a shingle. It may not be historically correct, but I, I like the look of it. And I kind of wanted to have a lot of different textures in this project. So we got to have a Tudor style kind of farmhouse bottom. We got some uh, 
wooden floors, some trim on there. We got some brickwork, uh, lots of different textures and different things that we can paint on here to make this uh, painting tutorial uh, really interesting and cover a lot of different, different ground, let's say, uh, in this one. So you'll see the camera's a little sped up. Uh, this is real brown. Uh, you can see I've already covered everything in the black primer and it's dried. I'm showing you that you need a piece of paper towel and uh, I got my pickle jar of water. Uh, and this is kind of how I start. I just kind of pull the paint out onto my little uh, plate here uh, and take most of uh, most of it out. I put some of it out uh, uh, into the uh, paper towel there. And you can see I just start tapping it. Similar to the bark paint tutorial, if you've watched that one, you can see how I just kind of tap it on there. So I'm not trying to cover the whole thing. I still want to keep uh, some of those black shadows uh, from the undertone in there. Um, but uh, I would say I put more of the real brown than all the other colors I'm going to be adding on afterwards. Um, it's really your kind of your core base. Uh, but you can see uh, I've even doing some back and forth passes on here. Um, I know it's sped up, but it's really just tapping it. Uh, again, just like the bark video. And you can see I'm just tapping those colors on there. Now in the center of uh, the floor, similar to my docks, I want to start lightening the center of it where it's more weathered. And I kind of drag it off to where the door entrance way is a little bit. I'm um, assuming that's where the people would be, uh, the most traffic would be. Uh, and that's kind of where I concentrate the paint in, uh, in here. And I'm just swirling it around. Now for the walls, I lie the brush flat. And you can see I'm just rubbing against there and it just kind of gets the raised areas. That's just a dollar store foam board that I use a tin foil ball to texturize, which gives you a good texture on it. And then I'm going to slap a little bit of brown in the middle of that door there. And for the shingles, I pull upwards. So you can see I'm using the brush and I'm just pulling it upwards. So I know we're kind of speeding through this, but uh, we're going to cover three different colors and we're going to kind of go through the same technique on all of them. So this is the bark brown, so now we're going to a lighter brown, and uh, we're going to put even less of this on here. So you can just, I'm just showing all the pieces all covered with the real brown. So you, you see i got a good coat of the real brown on everything. And so now I'm hitting it with the uh, bark brown. So this is a much lighter brown. The same way, I'm going to tap it. You can see this, it just hits the raised areas of everything. Uh, some of the texture on the uh, dollar store foam board just kind of looks like stucco. Uh, this is perfect. This is what you want. Just a little bit on the edges of everything. Uh, and you're just kind of tapping everything, getting to those windows. And uh, you're not covering everything. You're just kind of highlighting some of the raised areas. And we're going to get a nice uh, buildup of layers. That's how I like to uh, uh, weather my buildings. I add a lot of weathering to it uh, by putting lots of layers. So again, hitting the center of that floor again, because that's where our lightest area is going to be. We're kind of laying the groundwork for the colors that we're going to be adding on the top of it. So uh, you kind of always look at what is underneath the color you're about to put on top. Walls are done the same way. Keep the paintbrush flat and kind of rub it in there. Uh, and you're just kind of getting a mixture of colors on those walls. It kind of looks like dirty, uh, stuccoed, like old style walling. I really like that technique of just the paintbrush being flat. And you can see I'm just kind of pulling that brush up. Uh, that's what I'm pointing at. Uh, and I kind of really just tap the top, just kind of just highlight it. Uh, and I've actually, you know, don't have that much paint on my brush, but a little bit. Because uh, you'll see if, if you're tapping it on there and you can't see it at all, then you need, you need to add a little more paint to it. Now I hit that door as well. I just fast forwarded past that part, but you can see I added it to the door as well. So now we're going to the Pablo. And we're going we're gonna to highlight a few areas too. So I put even less of the Pablo on her because it's really, really bright. And we just really, really, really just want to touch a few things, give a few highlights. Uh, it adds a nice uh, colors to the bottom stones down below. Uh, just adds a nice uh, texture and color to it. So we're going to hit those walls. Uh, but I didn't put a whole lot on the center of the floor, just a little bit in the middle, just to highlight it a little bit more. We are going to cover that with yellow ochre, but right now we're just kind of tapping it with a little bit of a uh, pablo and then we're gonna hit all these shingles and then we're gonna hit the center of the door again so pretty much the first three colors are pretty well the same technique um, we're just adding layers on top of layers all right so now we're gonna move to the camel and we're gonna kind of do a little more of the stonework we're really gonna work over the stonework so i moved to the army painter medium-sized uh, dry brush uh, and I got my, uh, I got a brand new brush. So now I've dumped the water from my previous colors and, and I kind of have a, a new brush for the camel. 
Uh, I'm gonna so I'm gonna start some stonework coloring, and I want it to be a little different than the uh, browns that I've been putting down already. So we're gonna start with the stonework around the base of this farmhouse with this camel, and I'm just gonna do kind of circular motions. And you can see I didn't put enough paint on the first time, so I'm gonna put a little bit more on there. And you just kind of have to adjust that. Now you're not trying to cover it again, you're just trying to hit certain areas. It's okay if some stones don't get any uh, color at all. Maybe they're a totally different color. Stones are very random. Um, so I'm really just kind of, you know, tapping it randomly all over this uh, stoned area. Uh, and some are brighter than others, some are darker than others. We're going to add several colors over top of it. Again, more layers. Uh, that's really going to bring out those stones and give it a real authentic, uh, uh, real look. So now I've moved to that uh, wider brush uh, because I want to do the flat walls. So I can't really do that with a dry brush. So I had to switch to the flat brush. Uh, and I'm going to hit it with that camel. And it's really going to highlight those walls. And, uh, and now color looks kind of bright right now. You have to remember that these colors will dry darker. So I don't panic if it looks a little bit bright when you first put it down. Uh, it will dry darker. Um, so always take that in consideration uh, when you're painting that the things will dry darker. Um, so sometimes you, you might not make it uh, bright enough, right? Uh, and it uh, just becomes too dingy. So you have to come in and hit it again with some more color. So I kind of hit this door with a little bit too much. Now it's okay if you just stick your finger under and rub it in there. I, I, I'm pretty, you can see my hands are just messy. I'm really kind of right, right in it when I'm painting. I <laughs> uh, just kind of made kind of a mess, but it looks good. So these are the real brown and uh, yellow ochre. Uh, these are all folk art paints, by the way, right now, craft paints. Uh, and uh, I really what I'm doing here is I'm mixing those two together. And you can see I got kind of that mustard color, a really dark mustard color. And that's how I, I'm going to start with that undertone on the wood. So I want to start with a lighter color first. We've got a little bit of colors already. You can see how uh, I let that dry and it's a little bit darker than when we originally put it on, that orange pablo. Uh, so now it's ready to add that uh, yellow on top. So this is that uh, real brown and yellow ochre mixture, uh, and we're laying that down. We're kind of covering most of the area, but when I'm doing this, I always make it brighter in the center, and you kind of work your way out. You're just rubbing it in, really. You're not, like, dry brushing anything right now. I'm using that dry brush to just rub it into the wood. Uh, that's the advantage of using popsicle sticks and, and uh, stuff like that. Uh, you're able to really rub that in, the paint, into the wood. Uh, and you get kind of a really uh, interesting effect and uh, that I really like for weathered wood. Now, what I plan on doing uh, is adding, uh, which I don't show, is the yellow ochre. When I just did the same technique, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow ochre in the center and spread it all around, and that'll brighten up. Uh, as you can see right now, the floor is nice and bright. And I added it to the door as well, doorway. So now we're going to move on to the stonework again. We're going to desert yellow. And we're moving into more miniature paints now, a little more finer detail. That skeleton bone, these are all army painter paints now. Uh, necrotic flesh and mummy rope. Now you've probably seen me do these lots of times on my stonework. Uh, we'll take a little bit deeper dive and watch me put add these colors on. But uh, if you watched the stone tutorial, you would have already seen how I do this. Uh, but I did it, in, it was craft paint in that video. I found craft paint alternatives. Uh, so if you want to refer to that instead of using miniature paint, uh, I I do a video on how you could just use craft paint to do the stonework. So I'm adding that desert yellow on first and really just hitting random stones. Uh, not, again, I'm not covering the whole thing. I'm just hitting random spots so it, it's more yellow on certain stones and, and uh, a little different color than some of the other ones. I got some interesting brown colors going on from all the undertones we put in. So you're really just getting kind of a random look to it. Uh, and then we got uh, going on here, uh, we've moved to Skeleton Bone. So it's a lighter, it's similar to Camel, but it's lighter. And we're going to light up some of these stones. But you can see I'm not adding a whole lot, just rubbing, hitting some of the raised areas. Uh, again, just uh, I, I actually make it brighter in certain stones where I actually put a little bit more paint on. But really, it's just random. And I'm just showing you the front of the house. Of course, you, you just carry this technique all the way around the bottom of the base. I uh, just figured we, we wouldn't cover all the sides painted. It's painted the same way. So now we're moving to the necrotic flesh. It's more of a greeny color. 
uh and it just adds a little maybe a hint of a like there's some plant life on it uh it seems some stones get a bit of a green look to them uh so i want to kind of capture that on here as well and, and we're adding that color to the uh, overall piece as well so again same technique uh, you can see this is all done the same way uh, but uh, there's no real uh, set pattern it's just random and the more random the better it just looks more authentic and then the final color is mummy robe and usually i just drag the dry brush over top of the stones when i'm doing a mummy robe opposed to the circular motions but i still do some circular motions but you can see i kind of just rub it across trying to trying to get really so most of the raised areas with, with the edges of the stones with that really lighter color mummy robe is uh, almost white but it's kind of a pinky white but it looks good with these uh, brown mixtures so that's pretty much my formula for the walls. So this is Army Green by Army Painter. Uh, and it's kind of a muted green. I used it on the bark walls when I painted the bark. And um, I don't have a house with green walls on the outer uh, wall. So I decided to do this building in green. I've done, uh, you know, I have red and burgundy. And uh, I have like tan colors and all sorts of other colors. I have a blue house. Uh, but I don't have anything in a green. But I didn't want to do something really outrageous bright, so it's similar to the bark, so it matches the time period and the weathering. I went with a kind of a muted green. This this army green is perfect, uh, and we're going to use some necrotic flesh to highlight that. Now again, I sped up the camera a little bit. Uh, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm not being overly careful. I don't really care if I hit those wooden planks. I'm more of just to care about putting colors in between where that uh, drywall is. So this is a necrotic flesh. You can see this is after I've added all the green. That army green looks pretty good. I like the color. Uh, but I want to add two tones to it. I want to have it lighter and like it's weathered in more areas. So I switched to the flat brush now. I've left the uh, the dry brushes and now I've moved into the flat brush that I paint ships with. And again, just making circular motions. And I'm brightening up areas where uh, I want it to be lighter. So it's going to be darker to the edges and uh, lighter. Uh, to the center so we're really starting to now work in the weathering of the walls uh, we're going to add uh, washes and other stuff on here but this is really your foundation you're starting to uh, you did your dark color first and now you're kind of putting your light highlight over top of it and it really gives you a natural feel to it uh, that there's a highlight going on there already now we have all the undertones and all the other colors we've added in before uh, and now we got kind of a nice bright uh, green color so now we're going to go to Necromancer Cloak, so we're going to address some of the wood. So now that we have all those green kind of blobs over top of all the planks on here, um, it's perfect to use that necrotic, uh, sorry, Necromancer Cloak, and we're going to cover those. As you can see, I'm covering where I kind of, I wouldn't call them errors, it's just because I didn't really be careful about it. I really wasn't concerned about it at that stage. Uh, and uh, I really wanted to add the gray to the, to the planks anyways. It gives a nice aged wood look to it. Uh, again, we're laying foundations for uh, the speed paint that we're going to put over top of it in, in a minute here. So we're going to cover all those green spots that we created uh, painting those walls. And we're going to cover, and don't cover them all, just, just cover the little bits, of, uh, bits that you missed. Kind of hit the gray at the, you know, the top of the shingles here and at the top of those planks. Uh, and uh, just you just want hints of it turning gray, the wood. It's getting a little old. Uh, and we're just going to hit little spots on the door here. You can see kind of where the cracks are and stuff like that. I just kind of add a little bit of gray in there. This is going to be interesting when we add the speed paints over top of it. You've got the undertones underneath. So this is an ash gray, uh, I guess, uh, again, by Army Painter. And it's a lighter gray color. You can see that bottle is well used. <laughs> I sometimes use that actually to prime miniatures as well, that color. Uh, if I'm out of a gray primer, I'll use that ash gray. works pretty good, too. Uh, so I'm just hitting some areas here as well, uh, lightening it up, making it look uh, like uh, older wood. Uh, and this really uh, highlights when you add that speed paint over top because you have these lighter grays underneath once you cover it with that. Uh, I think we're gonna, it's hardened leather is what it's called. That's what we're going to cover it with uh, speed paint. But we'll get to that in a sec. I just want to show you this, adding these grays in first. So we're going to hit the shingles, the door, and all the uh, planks on there. And uh, again, I'm only just showing you one side and just showing you the basic techniques here. And we're not going to show you every shingle that I painted on here. It's all done the same way. 
Um, again, I, I make some lighter than others, uh, just random. It gives it a more natural feel, just to make it random. And then we're going to hit this uh, door as well with a few areas with that lighter gray, that ash gray. And then we're going to move on to, uh, after this, to the uh, the speed paint here. I'm going to cover over some of this stuff with the speed paint. All right, so this is a uh, hardened leather. So it become my one of my new favorite colors. Uh, and this is the other brush I was talking about. It's kind of like a... It's a thicker hair is on the end of it, so it takes up more of the wash. And it's got a bit of a point to it. Um, but it works great for adding washes to things. And you can see where we've lightened it. Uh, it's kind of highlighted underneath that uh, speed paint once we put it on there. Now, I, I didn't cover all the grays. I cover most of it. But uh, some areas I leave where the gray is still exposed. Uh, and it kind of really gives it a nice little aged look on that wood. So you got some areas that are, you know, still got a bit of its color to it left. Uh, and you also got some grays underneath there. It's lighter in different spots. And you really got some random feeling going on to it. Maybe it's a, a rain that's weathered it down. Uh, and it just got a kind of different uh, colors and things have bleached it out on there. And then you got these uh, interesting plays. I really like painting, uh, to be honest, uh, really damaged things and and weathered things it really there's such interesting colors and plays and things what happens when it gets weathered so we're going to put a generous amount on this uh door here uh, and covering up uh some of the grays we put on there so we're going to use a, a skeleton horde and uh, air uh air shader uh, as uh, some of the final colors that we're going to be adding on here to add some more weathering to it so i'm using that same brush that was the thick hairs on the end of it uh, and I'm kind of going under the stones that are raised. So you have stones that are, I have different random stones on here. And wherever it's raised, I put this uh, shader underneath it. So it looks like the kind of the grunge and stuff is falling underneath where there's an overhang of a stone above it. It gives it kind of a, uh, an interesting look to it, a more realistic look. So I'm hitting some of those areas of the stone. Of course, we're going to hit it with both of those uh, washes. Um, and these are uh, Games Workshop colors uh, that we're using here right now, these two shaders. And I hit the door, I'm going to hit the shingles. Uh, I just showed you I hit the corner, so inside of the, of the house. Uh, and of course the stonework that we've been looking at. Now I ended up uh, going into the walls as well. And uh, that skeleton horde has a nice uh, play when you add it to the green. It really looks like stained and dingy uh, uh, parts of the wall, and I really liked the way that looked. So I made sure to add a lot more in there, and I kind of went back and added this to the video so you guys can see uh, I really liked the way that looked. I kind of dragged some from the top, too, and made it look like rain was leaking from the top. Uh, both uh, the ear shader and uh, the skeleton horde, I kind of did the same thing on both of them. So now let's get right to the Agrax uh, ear shader. Uh, and let's just start uh, really darkening up. So you can see we've added all that skeleton horde on there, all the different nice colors we got going on on there. It already looks really aged, but we're going to even take it uh, even a, more of a step further. And you can see I'm just tapping certain corners with that, uh, of where stones are, edges of the walls, just highlighting and emphasizing certain areas and making it really, really pop the colors I do have and, and darken certain areas. Uh, and, you know, the only thing I can say is, like, uh, I, I know that a lot of people just cover the entire piece with this. Uh, I like to just strategically place my washes. And I think I've done that from the very beginning. I think I did that on my temple build where I covered washes and I talked about strategically placing washes in certain areas. Not to go too overboard. You can go overboard with these washes and, and really kind of ruin all the colors that you've been putting on, all these beautiful layers that we've been adding. Uh, can be destroyed by adding too much wash on. So try not to uh, go a little too crazy with the washes and uh, just hit strategic areas because we want to have all those beautiful colors that we added in there already. So the final step is I added some gunmetal and uh, rust, um, dry rust to the hinges and the doors, just a little bit. And I kind of covered it with Urgrax uh, Earth Shader again just to kind of uh, dirty it up afterwards. So I didn't kind of show you that, but I just wanted to mention that I added that on there. Now on the on the shingles on the roof, I did also add some yellow dry brushing on there. 
uh, where it's broken the, the popsicle sticks. All right, so let's get to the game table. Check it out. Uh, we got some uh, English uh, uh, buccaneers attacking some French. Uh, looks like a Caribbean militia, uh, and they're defending this farmhouse. Uh, it looks like it came out real good. Matches a lot of my other terrain. Uh, I like to keep that same color scheme with a lot of my stuff. Uh, and uh, those green walls, I, I don't have a house with the green walls. You can see that the Spanish mission's got more of a yellow, goldy walls. And uh, this one's got kind of a green, dingy wall. So I really like the, the different colors of the houses. Uh, and the weather, weathering really came out great. Uh, really happy with the final product. Let's take one look on the inside. Those walls came out great too with all the different layers. Uh, and as well as the uh, doorway and the floorboards. All right, so that's the end of this uh, video. I hope you guys enjoyed this painting tutorial. Uh, and uh, I want to thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.